Father Benedict is going to blame Nicole, and Nicole's going to blame Father Benedict. Okay, I have to be honest. The weather in New York this March has been weird. We start the month with a couple of days of snow, then it gets frigid cold. Today it's actually rather pleasant outside. So today is Monday, March the 11th, 2019, Monday of the first week of Lent. We have a book for petitions in the church, and I have to admit, every time I walk by, I am so edified by the number of people who are praying, praying for particular intentions, praying for different things. You know, I don't like to say these kinds of things, but on the list of Father Peter's pet peeves are unflushed toilets. I just don't know why somebody in here doesn't know how to use the toilets. Well, I'm glad I'm not alone in this problem. I'm glad that other people are noticing it. Okay, I get it. I know there are germaphobes out there. Bring gloves, put them on your hand so that you can touch the button or press the lever. So it is now our gym, it used to be the chapel, the church that was originally built here. It's got a beautiful entrance. It says RC Church of the Blessed Sacrament. Beautiful image of Jesus holding the Blessed Sacrament. Good morning, how Good are morning. you? <laughs> As any priest will tell you, at the daily mass, you kind of get used to who's regular and who comes and when they come. Just a little bit ago, I saw Frederica coming into the church with her daughter, and now I know why. I just took a look at the, the intention for today's Mass. So we have these lighters here, these click kind of lighters for people to light the candles and the like. And I'm amazed there's a lot of people that really have the struggle with lighting them. They have a hard time lighting them. Occasionally, I even find one of them broken because people were like trying to force it. I guess it's the coordination thing of pushing and pulling at the same time. Okay, I was playing with this and I, and I clicked and I clicked it right at the lens and then I realized I've got the, I got the, <laughs> we have this little cover for the microphone and I'm, and I'm playing with this and I'm clicking it underneath here and all of a sudden <laughs> I started to sound like, whoa, whoa, nope. Okay, it's almost time for the nine o'clock mass. Of course, as always, I'm going to keep you in my intentions because I know we all need extra prayers, especially as we continue our Lenten journeys. Well, I'm finally ready to go out and say Mass. I had one of those senior moments. I had to change the batteries in my microphone. I took the same batteries that I took out and put them back in the thing. Senior. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. So when the weather gets a little bit nicer, you see sometimes what the parrots like to do. They'll come down, they'll play on the grass, pick up some of the sticks that they've dropped. So this morning, someone told me about a young man named Jacinto who has been watching this. Jacinto, if you are watching this right now, yes, I am into cars. I am very into cars. I grew, you got to remember, I grew up in the era of muscle cars. I've owned a 2003 convertible Mustang GT. I, am, I used to love watching the Speed Channel. Unfortunately, they took it off of our system, so it's not included any longer. Hold on, check, check, check this out. I want to show you something. Hold on. Check it out. Mustang, 40 years of muscle car. This is for you, Jacinto. I have to admit, I do miss that car, especially on a nice day like today, when you get one of those nice, warm, sunny days, put the heat on, put that top down, take a ride. Oh, oh do I miss that. Now, I know not everybody is a Ford or a Mustang fan, but they're one of the few cars that have survived down through the, e the years. Probably one of the fastest cars, production cars, that's going to be put on the road is going to be the Tesla Roadster. That thing, they say, is going to be sick fast. It's also going to be like $250,000, $300,000 car. Eh, a little out of my price range, but I would love to take a ride in one. I'm reminiscent of a day when you could pop the hood and look into the engine compartment and actually see an engine. Like there was really nothing underneath there, really. There was a distributor cap, an air filter, and that was pretty much it. It was so easy to tinker with things and to try to increase the, the horsepower a little bit.
I do get a kick out of some of the things that you discover just laying around in this place. God is with you. The angel could see I was scared. So he said, do not be afraid. Wow. <laughs> Only in a Catholic church. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's nice to see you again today. So good to see you too. <laughs> Perfect. But because Sunday happens to be St. Patrick's Day as well, I will allow myself to indulge in a drink. Hey, you're <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> you're talking about St. Patrick's Day on Sunday, part. <laughs> but Saint pa poor St. Patrick has to get his chance. We have to honor him, no matter what we're eating and drinking. <laughs> he wants us to have a drink. We try to do oh, the Angelus every day at noon, so... <laughs> nice of you to join us, Father. But it's Father Benedict's turn to lead, so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. You know, so in returning to the culture of mercy, the church herself has always been the culture of mercy. There's a great movie that had come out in the 80s called The Scarlet and the Black. I love that movie because it demonstrates how God's mercy should be manifested within the church. It's actually a true story about a Monsignor of Flaherty who worked in Rome during the Second World War who went about hiding people from the Nazis. A Colonel Kapler was assigned, and between the two of them there was this give and take, this back and forth throughout. At some points this Colonel Kapler is just doing everything he can persecuting him, following him, pointing guns at him, arresting people, torturing people, anything he can to break this ring. But the scene that sticks out in my mind as an example of the mercy, the way the church is a merciful church, is at the end of the movie when the Nazis have been defeated and now this Colonel Kapler is behind bars, he turns to Monsignor Flaherty for mercy. Monsignor Flaherty's initial reaction would be like any of us. Any of us would say, are you kidding me? You who are such a horrific person? I'm doing nothing for you. At first, Monsignor Flaherty walks away and it still sticks in my head when he calls out, priest, priest. If you really believe what you preach, you'll do it. You expect me to help you after what you've done. I can't believe it. After all you've done, you want mercy. I'll see you in hell first. No. You're no different from anyone else. All your talk means nothing. Charity, forgiveness, mercy. It's all lies. You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? Priest! 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 You think it's over, but then it turns out that the only visitor that Kapler had was a Monsignor O'Flaherty. He continued to visit him and eventually, in 1959, baptized him and received him into the Catholic faith. If you've never seen the movie The Scarlet and the Black, you have to see it. Great, great, great Catholic film.